Hey everyone, welcome to a very special episode of the Llama Drama Podcast with myself, Dan of BeyondSims.com and... Rachie Bob from RachieBob.com. We are joined today by SimGuru Icebox and SimGuru Megs from the Sims Freeplay team. Hi guys! Good, good morning, welcome. good evening. How are you both going? Hello! <laughs> We're good, thank We're you. Good. Hi! How are you are both you okay? Both? Going yes, well, thanks. Everything's going really well. Mm -hmm. Bright and early today, good. ready for a big week ahead as we are ramping up to The Sims Freeplay's 10th birthday. And <gasps> we're so hyped to be here on the podcast with you both today. Oh, it's always so, so fabulous so to be able to have you on here. You know, I think it's been like uh, about 12 months since we last caught up and chatted all things Freeplay and maybe even Sims Mobile back in the day as well. Oh yes. Gosh. It's that was fun. crazy how fast that's gone. It doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's almost coming up to your three-year anniversary of podcasting. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I, I think I, th I, th I think we I think we hit that at the end of August. So yeah, we've we've been doing this for Ooh. three years as well, and it's it's always really bizarre because whenever we get together to podcast, it never feels like it's been like a month. And then when we looking at anniversary, it's like, oh my gosh, if we've been doing it for that long. <laughs> yes. I saw your like 40th episode was dropped the other week and I was like, that's yes. a huge um, achievement. So congratulations. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. I don't yeah. know. I've put up with him this long. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But no, it's it's ten exciting. years, guys. Ten years. That's what it's on the fifteenth. Yeah, that's it. That's correct. It's it's so exciting. We've been celebrating for the last two weeks. Um, Danny can probably talk more to this, but it's uh, an incredible milestone for any video game, let alone a mobile game. And um, being part of the Sims franchise is an absolute privilege, and we are so excited to be able to bring this milestone to life in the game with a whole bunch of cool content and events and sales and even just the engagement on our social channels. It's been a blast so far. Oh, yeah. that's such an awesome way to celebrate. And like you say, um, 10 years for any game, again, let alone mobile, is, is just insane. So you mm. must be so proud to be reaching that milestone. Yeah, it's pretty yes, surreal. Definitely. Danny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just surreal. Like, um, as you were all saying, 10 years is just such a long time. I'm, I struggle to think of many, maybe some of the MMOs, if we're talking about more of like a hardcore audience of gaming, uh, have, you know, 10 years under their belt, but it's, it's still quite rare. So, yeah, it, it's quite an amazing opportunity to be able to work on something that has had such a legacy and still has such longevity to it. It's, yeah, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Well, the really exciting thing that we've got here today is we have a variety of questions that we would love to be able to ask you to celebrate your anniversary. Um, <laughs> I believe we have 10 questions for 10 years of free play. If Oof, you are sounds game good. to participate. Totally game. <laughs> Imagine if they were like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I just came here for the short episode. <laughs> I'm so ready. I am. You can't even. You can't see it, but I'm smiling from ear to ear, ready to jump right into these ones. They're juicy. So let's let's kick off. Phenomenal. Let's dive right on in. So the first question we've got for you is: After ten years of the Sims free play, how does the team keep coming up with fresh ideas? Danny, this is totally you. Hmm. There's so, yeah, there's so, so, so many ways. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, you could even talk to the the beginning of community and marketing and, and your side of things, Megs, with, um, with Alana. Um, but from a game team perspective, yeah. we do, um, I'm sure you would have noticed we do player surveys sometimes. So if you've ever seen, uh, like, what would, what themes would you like to see in free play, and, and tell us all all your grievances and all of the things that you're loving about the update. That's us trying to get some information about what our community is really after at the moment, um, and especially for, I guess, themes, if we're talking about new ideas and, and features. Um, we do reference anything that's written in there and any of the prioritisation tasks that we sort of ask about, you know, would you prefer vintage or would you prefer... Uh, glamorous ball gowns and there's, there's a whole bunch that we usually put in there so hearing what our players really want from that is a great way because it 
it doesn't discriminate by level or any other, uh, you know, game perspective that a player might be in, um, like what state they're in, if they're new or if they've been with us for a long time. So it's a really good holistic picture. We also, um, like, especially as the gurus, we get on Twitter. You might have also seen sometimes we ask questions like, hey, what would you like to see for Valentine's Day? Um, What would you like to see for a wedding or a Christmas or any other kind of theme that we might be planning for? Um, And actually the community, I think now that we've been in gurus for a while, they've sort of gotten used to that as well. So sometimes they don't even need to ask and I just get ideas sent to me and that's the best. (laughs) So we actually started to create a Pinterest board um, where any time we have an image or like a reference or something sent to us, we can just save it and then if we have a gap of something that we need to create, we can say, oh, okay, well, we know that players are sort of asking for this stuff. Can we just look at that, you know, inspiration board and see if we can pick something from it? Um, so I'll, actually there's a quite a lot that comes from community. And I think uh, it's just such an interesting thing for us because as we were talking about, 10 years is such a long time. When we come to Christmas or any kind of, I guess, big milestone or seasonal beat, it's it's quite challenging for us to come up with something that's fresh and fun, even though it's the same uh, kind of celebration, I suppose, because we're like, okay, well, we could do a Christmas tree, but hey, have we given a Christmas tree like every other year? What's What else can we do that's interesting about yeah. Christmas, as an example? So, um, yeah, it, it, is a, it is a challenge, yeah. but that's why the community is so important for us as well, because we get to hear... You know what, what those gaps are and what really the difference is for for players. That's pretty awesome. Because you have to like fulfil the people that have been playing for all that time, mm. and then the people that are yeah. new as well. That's part of the challenge, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Striking that balance, I guess, and I think that's always one of the really cool things about the Sims community in general, whether it's you know the PC franchise or mobile games, is they're always quite keen to engage and you know, share their ideas, their thoughts. So it's, it's really great that that relationship exists. Definitely. And it's actually surprisingly... I'd also like oh. to add... No, no, sorry, Danny, you go. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying, uh, definitely, it's really surprising how different sometimes, like, the dev- development team might be thinking about what to use or what to plan for. And then some of the changes or differences or even new ideas that come from the community that just... They're perfect and they're great ideas, but they just never occurred to us because we're in a different space. Um, like we're just thinking about different things all the time so to have that kind of focus or to have someone say hang on you know you haven't done senior outfits for a while and we have planned for it recently or we've just done one and we thought we had like it's just a bit of a disconnect from all the planning that we do versus what the players actually see day to day and what is meaningful to them still like maybe they haven't got enough even if we did deliver it so yeah that kind of feedback is always really really helpful I would also add that our EA creator program is just as equally valuable as our community because we have, uh, both of you would know, Rachel and Dan, that uh, it's so important to listen to the micro communities out there and all the different pockets of players that are all around the world on a global level and the things that they look for in their cultures, in their yep. gameplay experiences, you guys actually filter them back to us too. And uh, I would, in our EA creator program, so it's it's really valuable for us to get feedback from all directions for, from all different types of players out there for the reasons that they like to play so yeah I still Love remember Joy's creative finger was um, advocating for hijabs from her community and that was kind of the first time we were like of course we need this why don't we have it and that's a fantastic idea let's let's look into it yeah. and that's that's exactly how it came about it started from uh, a micro community and then through Joy's and then to us um, and yeah sometimes that's we just so need amazing. we just need that uh you know, I guess inspiration to be able to say, hang on, yes, maybe we should look into this or yeah. hang on, our technology's progressed enough now that we can relook at this. So sometimes it's just that, you know, spark that can really get us to, you know, <laughs> reinvestigate or, um, yeah, see, like rethink about the same kind of problems we've had and, and just get it done. So, yeah, that was one. And, we, and Megs, we've also got, um, I believe, our romance beat coming up soon, which is Mitchell's inspiration right 
Yes, this is an exclusive we wanted to talk to you guys about this morning because we haven't Ooh. talked about this publicly at all yet. We, When we filmed our latest Sims TV, which has just gone up on YouTube last Friday, which I'm so hyped for, we I had literally over an hour's worth of video footage to cut down to a juicy 30 minutes that it ended up being. So there was so much we couldn't add into the final cut. But what we wanted to discuss with you is that for an example for how we come up with fresh ideas is that one of our EA creators who is Spanish, Mexican, apologies, Mexican, um, she, her name is Mishiro, or I yes, and she's like suggested something really exciting for our romance theme. Like Danny said, every year we do romance. It's Valentine's Day is a big seasonal beat for The Sims. And like, how do we keep this fresh and exciting? And then she just dropped all these beautiful reference images and like gave us a really deep and lovely explanation around the types of things that her culture celebrate during February and we're able to bring that to life and get her to I guess sense check and validate that everything was culturally accurate that we put together and she's yeah she's seen all the early access content and we're really excited to be able to bring something so special this February for our Valentine's Day update so well, stay tuned that's for all amazing. that stuff when that's out. Yeah. That's amazing. And she's such a nice person as well. It's like <laughs> so nice to see that being realized in the game when you see like players and people involved in the community that just live and breathe the game, then getting that, that piece mm. of them immortalized into it. Yes, yeah. I think that's one of the best things about live service game development is that we're able to be agile and work on the fly when things like that come through and yeah, being able to push out content regularly on a cadence. So we are always trying to keep up with trends as close as we can. And yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Excited to see that. Mm. <laughs> so I have um, the next question, which is, who writes the quests um, because I need to know this because I, I love the quests. I love them so much. <laughs> There's always like these really long, complicated words that I have no <laughs> idea what they mean. There's always at least one or two. And I have to like Google the pronunciation and what does that mean? And I start thinking, am I just really silly or it's like a crazy word maybe we need like a so, dictionary feature in the game yeah. <laughs> roll yeah. out developing like, vocabulary here i mean just trying to push the boundaries of creative writing <laughs> yeah it's an education so i want to know who's responsible <laughs> that's really funny yeah uh, just just to be clear i also have the same issues like i will review the quest and be like hang on I don't know this, <laughs> so you're not alone. It happens. <laughs> um, it's our design team, and yes, they're, they're quite creative. I think we have a few narrative design uh, interests in there as well. Um, and basically, they take turns every year, so um, I, I don't want to say exactly which one, like who did what in the, in every single one, but I know, you know, SimGuru, Penny and SimGuru Reese, they would have done one each um, at least, if not more, and we have a few other designers um, Tina and Ash who have also written some quests so this year I know Tina worked on it I have a feeling Ash did last year and then Penny the year before and then Reese the year before that but don't 100% quote me on it and then um the I know the design team works together to kind of refine their narrative as a team and give feedback and that kind of thing so it's usually spearheaded by at least one designer but they'll they'll also do rounds of feedback together and then of course the whole team has to uh, come together after the narrative's gotten a bit of structure to kind of bring it to life in game but yeah the, I'd say the designers get the get the prize for that one <laughs> they're so, so good and such a, a great part of the game good aspect got lots of new words that we'll be able to just pull out and amaze people with from it so. <laughs> I can't yeah, that's great <laughs> imagine that, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite funny when you like watch back videos of yourself walking through it. You're there, like you're trying to read through it. And you're just like, I'm just going to skim over that. <laughs> when I'm really editing cool. my video, I'm like, you can hear me typing the word, and then you can hear Google pronouncing it, and then it, I go back into it. Like, oh yeah, that's that. <laughs> I love like that. Like I knew I, all along. <laughs> nice. I think the player qu this this story quests are super popular, regardless of the weird vocab. But I think mm. the uh, I wish we could do more of them. I think at the we only really do one annually for Christmas, which uh, players that have been with us for many, many years come to know and love and look forward to. And they uh, they yes. usually end up on Christmas Eve every every year, and it's just the race to the finish line. So hopefully we can do more in the future. 
Yeah, it's so special. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. So, because I'm a bit of a tech nerd and I love knowing all the nitty gritty things, so obviously the game is 10 years old now, um, and I assume the game has obviously been built on technology from 10 years ago. So, are there any plans to like upgrade the core of the game, such as the graphics and things like that, to maybe bring it up to where you know, mobile games are today and some of the newer things that devices can take advantage of? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so I would say, just to, to give you, I guess, the, the look behind the scenes, um, there are some tools that we upgrade in the background or, or just get better over time. Like some, let's just say, 3D software. There's, there's a few other pieces of software that have probably improved. Uh, we have internal tools that we improve. And at... It's like to some level, that happens regardless of game, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got the actual game. Yeah. And I think that's what you're kind of more interested in with like how the Sims look, body shapes, face types, any of the cool stuff, right? So uh, I sort of did answer that a little bit in the video that we did recently uh, about body types. Um, yeah, we have a lot of challenges because of that old technology to do things that... Um, a pretty basic, I would say, or at least a basic fundamental or a need in The Sims. Um, and I think back then it was also not structured in a way where anyone thought that that would be required. So it was, it's kind of a mix of the technology and also just no like forward planning for, for such a thing. Um, I will say that we are looking into trying to improve The Sims um, in a way. So as an example, if you take any kind of clothing that you got maybe in the game eight years ago, even eight or maybe even five years ago, and compared it to any kind of new clothing that we make in live service now, the quality should actually be quite a big difference. And I think it's something that isn't really called out specifically or really easy to see until you put them next to each other. So that's an example of you know us getting better with textures and, and that cool. kind of thing. Same with build mode. It, there should have been a quality improvement over time. Um, Absolutely. And we're also hoping to, we're kind of investigating to try and see if we can improve Sims in some way. So uh, they're, they're kind of nice. small incremental changes. At some point, we didn't even have beards for men, so we've added beards. Um, we're trying to, we've obviously done make, uh, makeup for male Sims. We're trying to do a few things to see if, like, if people have got a hairstyle, is it possible to give hairstyles that exist to other, you know, genders and other um, age groups because even that is really difficult for us. And it, again, from a player's perspective, it's probably, it doesn't look that difficult. Like, hey, it exists. Can't you just make it work for someone else? No, we can't. But I'm hoping we can. Um, so the, I, I think we're basically, my answer is we're starting small with those small changes. Like, can I choose um, my left eye colour versus my right eye colour? There's, there's a lot we're looking at. And a lot of it is just based on what's technically possible and what we can change now. Um, but I think once we've achieved some of the main smaller things, we'd like to see if we can go a bit bigger with it too. Like, can we update how the Sims textures look or how the heads work? I think they're bigger pieces that we definitely want to look into. Um, but we're also just trying to tackle some of the smaller pieces uh, over time. And again, we don't really call it out very often, but Anytime we've done like, hey, now you have beards and now you can do this, it's a small thing, but it, it's probably really, really big in the back end, which is setting us up to do something else later, if that makes any sense. So, you know, that's really cool to hear that you're like looking into those things and seeing where you can do stuff and then, and you know, that, that I, I find that really interesting anyway. Yeah, so, <laughs> I agree, Dan. So I'm sure people think... will appreciate that. They they definitely do, and we do too. I think uh, knowing that we are trying to push the boundaries in with our technical limitations of having a 10-year-old game, I think you summarised it perfectly in your question. It is, uh, we, as Simguru Yak said in our Sims TV video, mm. like none of us, and uh, Grumpy Cat, none of us thought we would be here today, 10 years later. So forward thinking to this point was, I guess, just not something that was implemented at the inception of the the game like i think yak said it in the video that the highest performing the highest top tier device smartphone when sims free play launched 10 years ago was a iphone 4s oh yeah so that was kind <laughs> wow. of yeah like the the pinnacle of that point in that moment and i guess the scalability over time 
um, hasn't been kind to us, but we are pushing the boundaries wherever we can with um, some of the best artists and game designers and engineers in the industry, especially in Australia, to still make the most of what we can with the limitations that we have. No, that's really awesome. I think that's a good point, isn't it? Like, I guess when you're making it 10 years ago, the fact that it's still here, it's... it's Oh, it, honestly, amazing. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guess, yeah. and I guess, potentially tying into that with my next question, um, I don't know if this is an easy one. Um, do you have any plans to add different heights and body types? I guess potentially is looking at improving Sims and things, or is that maybe more of a technical constraint, perhaps? Yeah, it definitely is technical, a hundred percent. Heights and body types. So, I think. It, this is exactly the the question I pretty much answered in the other video. Where uh, any time this is this is what I've heard from the other devs. Like any time you're changing a, a major part of the body, so let's just say hips or the height or um, I'm not sure any any, any kind of yeah any kind of large change. I suppose it's it's animations. It, it's pretty much a new sim type for us. The way it's been set up in the back end. So again, not ideal, but that's that's what we're living with. And then because of that, they won't be able to do anything. They won't be able to inherit anything from the game that exists. So they won't be able to walk upstairs. They won't be able to walk at all, actually. <laughs> they won't be able to wear clothes. It'll just be a, a purely default sim. And, I mean, you can argue at that point we could make them a few clothes um, and we could probably invest the time to make them, you know, walk and uh, and that kind of basic functionality. But then them to be compatible with any of the equipment so if you open the fridge and take out a fruit item if you want to sit down on your couch if you want to do an animation with another sim they're going to be affected by all that so the amount of time and effort it would take to even just do one alteration and that has to be redone for any kind of alteration it's pretty much made it impossible for us to do um you probably spend, do you spend a lot of time, like, sorry, this is an additional yeah, question, but <laughs> do you spend a lot of time, like, trying things that, that you then find out you can't do? Uh, it happens, yes, but I think we try to at least do an investigation and get some kind of clarity before going too far. Um, I'm trying yes. to think of an example, I don't have one on hand, but that definitely has happened where we've gotten, we've invested a lot of time into trying to get something up and running and then it's just like, hey, this isn't working for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's not everything is possible. No, yeah. yeah. But we try to get yeah. some investigation. Like, people, again, we rely on the people who have been with us for a, a while to have that kind of knowledge or gut check. Um, and sometimes, yeah, investigations or, um, yeah, any kind of like demo or something that they can do to help prove that out. Um, we try to do it at the beginning before going so far that we're just like, oh, okay, we could have been, because anytime we do that, we're not working on something that could be play facing yeah. that's obvious. You know what I mean? So mm. it is a trade-off always. Yeah. Mm. I will oh, say, yeah. with body shapes and heights, I think it is still important to add that although we've explored the technicality side of things, that diversity and inclusion is still really important to us at Freeplay. Even though we can't execute it the way that we would like, we if we could we would want to do it right if we were going to do it at all. And if we can't do it the right way, that everybody feels like they can represent themselves in our game properly mm. and accurately, then we aren't really interested in doing it at all because it's not fair to all those other people out there that might miss out on what it should feel like to feel represented in the game. And um, it's we're all really per like passionate about it in the studio. I think it's something that's on the forefront of our minds and we do look at new ways to make our sims look more realistic. And like Danny said, we're doing some exploration around investigation around what that could look like in the ways we can achieve. But, um, yeah, we hear the players loud and clear. We see the requests on social every single day and we know that it's one of the biggest things that would make people even come back to check it out, we know, but... I think if we can't do it right, we can't. Absolutely. We shouldn't do it at all. Yeah, mm. I think that's totally yeah. fair, and I think people appreciate the fact that you know you are have you explore these things and you try these things, and you know they are items you are considering. So, yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, a lot of us are players as well. So, you know, to, to some extent, we also have the same grievances and the same you know wants and requests. 
Um, and yeah, I think the longer you're on free play, the more passionate you become. So, <laughs> you know, people are sort of <laughs> really advocating for trying to get these things done too. But sometimes, yeah, in the case of body types and, and heights, it's, it's incredibly difficult. Yeah. So, okay, so totally different question now. When <laughs> should we expect the next Sim Springs neighborhood? Yeah, uh, makes G. Uh, I can take that. Yeah, one. yeah, go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we honestly, Rachi, we see the hype for this in our communities for the next iteration almost daily now that we've released the first one. And I think what we love the most about Sim Springs was the whole purpose was to give players more places to build house lots without demolishing their current ones. So they're they would have to sacrifice all that hard work that they've invested into creating the perfect layout. Now it's just additional space there. And mm. yeah, so we, we know players really want it and we can't say when at this stage, but it's definitely in development. So I think the whole, oh. the whole plan for us was that it was scalable and we could add onto it and continue to make it bigger as part of the menu UI that you see in the game. It's um, all the navigation insinuates there's more to come. So mm. it's, yeah, it's certainly something we're really focusing on and yeah 2022 is going to be a big year for free play oh so it's going to be 2022 <laughs> i mean we've got <laughs> two weeks left first. in 21 <laughs> yeah i know exclusive yeah but it's not 2023 that's that's yeah. helpful <laughs> okay cool yeah. i'm glad there's a golden nugget in there for you <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as well, you recently added inventory filtering, which is so good and saves so much time. But do you have any plans to add in a search bar? Awesome. Danny, this is you, I reckon. Actually, that, that just reminded me. I It was a while ago, I'm not sure if you remember, but in um, the, I guess, back then Game Changer program, the creator program, we had a chat about some ideas on how to make build mode better. I, th I asked the question. I'm not sure if you remember, but I got a lot of feedback from that, and that kind of helped us start um, this filtering feature, which you now have. So th that was just another example cool. of how it's not just themes always, but sometimes it's you know a little bit more concrete in features that we use uh, community feedback. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we, yeah, we, we sort of do, but maybe not in search. I think we investigated that initially. It gets complex and I don't know if we've really got a solution for when we have to worry about other languages. Um, and ah, yeah. so it, in, like, it sounds great in theory, right? You go, yes, you can just search and you've got, I don't know, a way that you can uh, identify all of your build mode objects in the background and you can just say pink or castle or fridge and it should come up. Yeah, we haven't really figured out how that works for other languages um, and, and, and the search for that. So I think that's probably the biggest one. And the, and the other problem we have is because of the way the build mode structured, <laughs> this is one of those things that we're hamstrung a little bit by, is we've got so much content over time. I think we get close to, um, yeah, maybe, uh, how many go live? We've got, so, we've got live events that take quite a few items. And I think we make like... Uh, don't quote me, like 60 items or so, and um, and that's every update. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, the, they, they go live to players, oh, yeah. but then we don't have a way of saying what type of content is everything. Like, we've got categories, and that's how the filtering works. So we can say this is a kitchen item, um, but someone is manually going through and saying that's a kitchen item. Uh, if we had to define mm -hmm. it by other types... It means someone has to go in and say, for every item that exists in the whole of free play, as we talk about 10 years, someone has to go in and say, like, this oh my gosh. This is black, and it's also <laughs> a fridge, and it's also a blah. Uh, yeah, yeah the so <laughs> it's tagging yeah. it. It's kind of like cataloging it. Um, and I just mm. don't know if we have the ability to do that for... Uh, for people to go back and tag it all, as well as the localization problem. So, like, again, it's not a no. I think that it's technically achievable, unlike the, the other ones we're talking about. But is it the next step we should take? I don't really think so. No, I was just going to say, you guys always put, like, massive updates in every update. So, yeah, definitely very grateful for that, because every single update comes with something that just makes the gameplay so much better. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rachie. That's awesome. That's really nice. We to definitely hear. try to do that. So, for your next question, um, 
Are there any plans to add AR mode to Android at all in the future? Because the one that came on iOS is so much fun. Um, <laughs> and obviously curious to hear if our Android users might ever be able to experience some of that as well. Yeah, so I know when we released it, uh, it was purely uh, for iOS because of the AR kit that comes in iOS. Mm -hmm. And I know at the time it was not possible on Android. Um, I know we get requests a lot for this, so I guess, like, I'm not a technical person, to be honest. I could check to see if it's possible these days, but I know last time we checked it wasn't. Um, so that that's purely the reason we didn't want to um, just go live with one uh, and, and ignore the other deliberately. It's, it's because the functionality mm. literally didn't exist. Uh, like, yeah, it wasn't possible on mm. Android back then. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's fair to say that we could look into it again. Um, I'm not, I'm not super hopeful. Oh my god, I sound so. <laughs> I'm just, I feel like I'm just a yeah, cloud of realist. sad. You're a realist. I, I like to call myself a realist, <laughs> but boy, I feel like I'm not I'm being that exciting. Um, look, I, yeah, I think we could look into it. I, I'm not sure it's, um, yeah, I'm not sure it's possible, basically. Oh, you know what, though, if it's not possible, <laughs> it's not your fault. No, I just I wish I had more. Like, I think a lot of yeah. our <laughs> a lot of our really cool features that add nuance to the game and things like the inventory filtering, as well as uh, the, uh, small other things, uh, they come out of these things that we love to do as a studio called game jamming. I don't know if you've heard of that term before, but uh, it's when people from all across. Uh, different disciplines come together and just make some magic together and it's mostly like there'll be a vision or a, a, um, an idea that starts and the experimentation sort of builds out um, more of that uh, investigation around can this come to life and that's true we think I think that uh, yeah it's really inspiring for game developers to flex their creative muscles and try something new and I I think that it's something like that we could always experiment on how we could add value to the augmented reality feature and see if we could bring it to both platforms so even, and even make it more exciting to add more value. So we, if we want to do it right, we could do it like that. Maybe the game team could do it a game jam in the future, Danny. That's true, yeah. Um, I, yeah, the game jam is more like a what, what if or what about this? And it, it gets people thinking. Mm. Actually, if we can drop a, another nugget, like Sim Decks was started from a internal games jam and so was removing okay. housebound um so they both were things that people were passionate about one was i'm a player and i don't know how to see anything that, and how the quests are connected in the game i want to know how that makes sense to me and the other one was you know i, w I want to be able to keep my sims on a lot without them running home because they're sad uh and so yeah bo <laughs> both of those things got done from a game jam i think we will be doing more mm, in the future oh sorry go no, all saying is that's pretty neat. Like that, you know, those things have come from those sessions and they've made their way through into the final game. Yeah, yeah, mm. and it's just giving people the space and time to think about, you know, some of the big problems. Like as an example, I think even relating to AR, I think it might actually be easier to do camera angles as an option in the game versus AR for Android. And I think if I'm understanding it right, that's what our players are really asking for. They want to see these interesting angles in mm. the house. And so I'm hoping that we can achieve, like we actually started that on an old game jam and didn't get finished, but I'm hoping that we can do camera <gasps> angles. Back to life, Danny. I will, let's don't do worry. That, that's, <laughs> Who do I need to speak to? That's, that's like, one of the things. Send like L-shaped rooms was the big one for <laughs> oh. me initially, and now my passion is camera angles. So, cause I, and it's because I see the comments so much, I'm like, I feel like we can do this. We have to be able to do this. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think if we were to bring that, which would be for iOS and Android, that that might at least mitigate some of the pain that the Android players have of not being able to do AR. Mm. So. so true. Uh, yeah. Keep us accountable, Rachel, Bob and Dan. Keep us accountable. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're here talking about it every podcast episode now. Give us the update. Exactly. <laughs> There'll be a section, is it here yet? <laughs> yes or no? Um, but I think <laughs> that's one of the really cool things about AR mode, though. It was being able to, you know, ex obviously being able to experience it in, in within your own, like, space, but also... Mm you know, experiencing the world you built and houses you built in completely different angles and, and, and things like that. So yep. hopefully, um, you know, that'll be possible one day. That'd be really cool. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so. so, next question. Is there a reason why we don't get something for every age group with each update, and how do you decide what to put in and what not to put in? Oof, this is a good question. Yeah, so I guess um, we've already spoken about how big an update is uh, for us every six weeks. We do have a certain amount of content we can make every update. So... Uh, especially, like, I'm assuming you're talking about CAS, or do you mean just anything? Yeah, CAS, Yeah, really. so for CAS, we can only really make um, a few outfits and then a few hairstyles every update. So that kind of means we have to be really selective on what, what we're going for. And it, it's really interesting. Like, I think it's a really interesting problem we have because at the start of this conversation, we're talking about different players at different stages in their sim life and they'll come into sims mm. replay and we might say hey i know players really want let's just say baby stuff that's a big one and and senior stuff let's do that if we just went all in on that uh players who are new to the game which are a lot of our players as well won't be able to use them because they don't have babies and seniors at that point in their game mm. so we have to think yeah, about so yeah and then but then you also have the other side, which is I've been here for 10 years or, you know, X amount of years, and I want that stuff because I've got too many adult female stuff. And and mm. I like we also understand that perspective, but it, it's just a balance, I think, for us. So what we're really trying to do is give something, either adult male or female, that everybody could use and, and is, um, you know, I guess we're not discriminating on the new players or the, the players who have been with us for a while, so that's something that everyone can use. And then we have... Um, some like I think we usually try to pick at least one. Uh, I guess we call it underserved category. So an an underserved really means we haven't done enough in that space to to give. So we might say, okay, this time we're mm. doing babies and we'll we'll get some stuff for that done. Or we'll say, okay, we're going to do toddlers and we're going to try and do a few cas and then maybe some build mode that complements it. So it usually comes down to the theming mm. of the event or um, or the seasonality sometimes, and then it's also just the team going. What is the what are the players asking for? Do they want baby? Do they want senior? Okay, do we have any um, images in that Pinterest that we're saving stuff into? Is there anything there that they've said, okay, we really need like, I don't know, toddler clothes or something that look like this? But honestly, because we haven't done much in that space for a long time, pretty much any idea we have is still feasible because it's just so empty in that space, right? So as an example <laughs> for Christmas, we, we've done a baby onesie um, and we made it Christmassy. Um, and we've also done, you know, uh, I think we did a senior Kaz in Christmas at some point. Yeah. Yes, for yeah. one of them. It was like a Mrs. Mrs. Claus PJs, potentially. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's so yep. cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so again, you'll, you'll uh, maybe now that I've said it, you'll start to see sprinkles of it, and it's really just because we need to also give things to players who are coming to the game and don't have those uh, age groups unlocked. Um, but also we're listening to the community about trying to put, you know, new things in there uh, for, for the other age groups as well. Yeah, makes sense. Thank yeah, you. thanks. <laughs> awesome. So, how are you celebrating 10 years of The Sims Free Play? And the very important part of this question is, <laughs> will there be cake? Because <laughs> you always used to do really fun cakes from like inspired by quests and things like that oh, so yes. i'm really intrigued to know all about that oh <laughs> I'm so glad you've mentioned it yeah every year i think even last year when we we're in lockdown i think i might have still asked a poll like what would our, our cake have been and i think if we ever got back to the office i'm sure we will at some point um I would like to see like ba a backlog of cakes ready to go, and <laughs> that I'm okay to have like one a week. Oh that's fine. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Megs, if you want to talk about the cake we did this year, that that's pretty cool. Yeah. So even though we're all working from home currently, I'm sitting in my one of my studies in my pajamas with my cat behind me. So it's kind of like we tried to do the best we could, at still coming together as a studio to celebrate the milestone. So we got sent a bake cake baking mix. So everything was in individual oh. sachets, <laughs> and we zoomed together at the same time and decorated and iced the the final 
design together with our webcams on as a collective. So I got to see everyone's kitchens and their like their setups at home and all the fails and like the ongoing commentary around <laughs> like why is yours like so good and mine looks <laughs> terrible. And it was really enjoyable and they had like we had like little plum bob sprinkles on the top and everything and it was just the plum only way we could sprinkles. really sprinkles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't uh, we need to sell them. <laughs> I, I agree. Oh my God. But in the in the past we've done things like a pig cake for one of the quests we had, a pug cake, a castle cake, and they're all taken exactly from the items in the game. And it was not gonna lie, pretty traumatizing slicing heads off like animal cakes that look super realistic. So <laughs> really glad that we didn't have to worry about the trauma repeating itself this year but uh yeah it definitely oh. will we'll continue the tradition for years to come that's for sure oh. but we are celebrating the 10 years of free play with a huge update which went live over two weeks ago which was in development for many many months earlier in the year as we were ramping up and it kind of just continued to get bigger and bigger as we started getting some momentum around how iconic this milestone kind of is but we were hosting a, the party of the decade is what I called it it was kind of like our big campaign around reminiscing and taking a trip down memory lane because of course we must 10 years is one of those Absolutely. things like you only turn double digits once and you sort of yeah it's going into a new era and like looking back at all the incredible things that our game team have done past and present to make it what it is today and that was our sims tv episode that went live on friday but then in the game we were celebrating every single day by doing something fun in the online store as well as the npc nightclub quest and oh my god daddy and i are in a video game oh my gosh oh yeah like, <laughs> like, like dream so come true sim self. <laughs> oh, a pinch me moment career goals like you know being a sim guru is a privilege enough in itself but also being immortalized in the game outside of just the credits rolling at the end is just wild and if i could have saved myself back in my early 20s pursuing my career in games I would never have thought this moment could ever happen so I'm so I'm having like a fangirl moment but I think um this milestone is so it's so precious for so many reasons for all of us and um yeah we've been trying to support all of our EA creators to to amplify their activities out there at the same time so Rach like we're working together on a, a competition for your channels and giving away some uh, life points, which is our premium currency for just telling us what your favorite free play, free, blah, 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 free play memory is. <laughs> what, what game is it? <laughs> free, free play. <laughs> oh, I need another coffee, my friends. But yeah, we're really excited to help um, amplify your channels out there, but also having, just taking a moment of the, in the day to just like think back of like what you like the most about our player experience and I definitely want to spin it back to you guys and what I want to ask you is what your friend free play memory is because <laughs> you're still playing after 10 years too so I definitely want to hear what you have to say around why you love our game just as much as we do oh for me I mean I've got so many memories of the game um but I think the main one is when AR mode was added just because it was so like it was so on the ball with what Apple are doing and it was like seeing that and then being correlated with the Sims free play utilizing it was really exciting and then me and Dan happened to be going to the Sims camp around the same time <gasps> and yes. you guys asked us to go on the live stream to show it off mm. And it was like, <laughs> it was the greatest thing because we were so nervous and we were all really nervous. And we like the first time we tried to get it working in the, in the live stream, it didn't work. And then they went back over to, they had a, another influencer building a gingerbread house at the same time. And they sort of <laughs> cut over to that. And I was like, we're going to get it working no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> and we just quickly like managed to get it working. And it's so cool how Dan could be on one device and me on the other but we were building the same house together in oh. augmented reality. That was just such a good memory. You're making me That's feel awesome. all the feels. That's so good. Oh, yeah. I feel like I was there. That sounds so nice. I'm casting my mind back to then. It's <laughs> roughly when I started on the team too, and I remember yeah, figuring really? out what we were doing for the Sims camp that year. So, yeah, I, I remember it quite well as well, Rach. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, it's awesome. 
Awesome. No, that, was, that, that was good memories. I really enjoyed that. And I feel like we're, we're fantastic at furnishing houses. <laughs> I <I'm gonna> say <laughs> so myself. <laughs> it was the worst house. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what my memory would be. I think it's, I'm kind of crossed between two two very different things. I remember when I first got like my first ever iPad and loading up the Sims Free Play on there. Um, gosh, this must have been in like 2012, 2013, and finally being able to experience it on like a big screen mm. and just the excitement as it kind of panned over like the neighbourhood and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. I know <laughs> I'm what you so mean. so excited. I love that. Oh, it was so good. Like going up from like a phone, especially like back then, obviously phone screens were smaller. So yeah. it was, that was really exciting. Um, but a very close second one was... Um, there was, I think it was when the downtown high, I might have got the, the name wrong there, um, quest came out where you had the, the pig school mascot. Um, I, that When that came out, myself, Rachel and some others, we were all at um, Gamescom and we were all just in our room just recording it off the iPad. It was just so funny, just us all kind of <laughs> commenting on each other's videos and watching each other play and understand how what the quest was all about. And that, that was just a really fun memory of us all kind of experiencing that quest together and just having such that. a fun time playing it that that's also that's very a great process. one so Dan. Cool. you definitely didn't say it wrong yeah i love that i love that you can just casually go to gamescom by the way like just just slide yeah. over to germany and you know <laughs> what on earth? Oh, we're all just kind of huddled in, i think we're all huddled in my room on my ipad just taking it in turns recording and doing our own things <laughs> and i think if you go back to the videos you can hear all of us kind of like chiming in in the background it's just it was just just a very um it's just all very funny those are perfect memories thank you so much for sharing that's great <laughs> how good <laughs> So what are your plans for the future of The Sims Free Play? Can you tell us? <gasps> I'm tell so us glad this is here. <laughs> I'm so glad this is here. I think uh, part of the campaign that we've put together for The Sims Party of the Decade was also looking to the future. So one thing we also didn't have time to add to The Sims TV episode, but you will see more on Twitter this week, is actually mm. some teasers for future content reveals. And we oh. never do this. I don't think we've ever teased content that hasn't come out yet, by the way, which is also just very nerve-wracking. If you can imagine the emoji face with the grimacing teeth, that's <laughs> me being like, are we sure? Are we sure we want to push this live? Oh, my God. So, uh, yes, but uh, with Danny here today, we can talk about the things we're going to post on the actual birthday for The Sims Free Play, which is the 15th of December, we're turning 10 and we're going to be doing some f content reveals with on our Twitter page and our Facebook page that are talking about some exciting stuff we've been developing that are coming out over the next few months in 2022. So Danny, uh, you're pretty much across it as much as I am. And would you mind talking more about what we've got on the content roadmap? We have... Uh downtown developer six so this is yep. a different part of downtown like you've seen it before downtown one two three four five uh six is another type of building um that you'll be able to build as usual there's not uh much of a change in game functionality but it is a new lot that players will get um what i'm pretty keen about is a new hair hobby and these hairstyles have been directly uh, created from uh, inspiration from our players. So these, I, I did a call out on Twitter about hairstyles that we need in our game, and I got a really great response. And I basically took uh, some of those and said, "Okay, great, we're gonna we're gonna bring back a hobby." I think I want to want to see how it goes with players. Um, we used to do a lot more hobbies. We kind of stopped in recent years, but I think it was a system that players enjoyed as more of like a casual type. I feel like we're missing that at the moment. Um, so hopefully we can bring it back and players actually enjoy going through a hair hobby event and earning some really great hairstyles that have directly come from our community. I think that's really cool. Um, and I guess the other wow. big one is, um, this is a really big one. We've been working on, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another feature in the background called, uh, Midtown Business, I suppose. Maybe the name might change. The designers haven't finalized it yet. It's very much work in progress. Um, but we want to introduce a new gameplay mechanic where you're basically going to a new location that is 
brand new, kind of like Sim Springs was a brand new location. This is another brand new location. Um, and it's in a midtown, so uh, you'll be asked to run a small cafe business and there will be sort of Ooh. NPCs that um, have autonomy to them in the sense that uh, you can hire sims to uh, staff your cafe and then there will be sims that come in and order from the cafe. And so you are basically managing, you're, you're the manager of the cafe and can kind of come in and say, okay, like I need to hire this person, uh, they're feeling stressed, I'm going to put them on a break or um, I want to have an influx of like customers at this point and you can kind of play with some of the, you know, the details around how the game works, but also it's it's an idle mechanic in in the sense of other mobile games. Um, so that's something that yeah we're, we're working on, and we think it's going to be a really great addition to be able to say I I, I like I can own my own cafe business. Um, we think it really ties into the world of free play, um, and you'll also be able to use all of your build mode on that lot. So it'll start as a small cafe, and as you progress, it'll start to get bigger and bigger if you continue to play in that game, and then. Uh, yeah, build mode will be fully available so you can decorate the cafe to however you'd like it to look like. Oh my wow, god. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. That, yes. <laughs> I, honestly, anything like like business related in the world of The Sims blows my mind. I loved The Sims 2 <laughs> open for business back in the day. So saying that you can have a cafe, Classic I'm like, flashback. yes. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Danny is not joking when it's, uh, I think... The, the visuals for these, it, it sounds hard to on sale without seeing them in front of you, but uh, the hairstyles we put together are next level. My hands are flailing around as I say that. It's actually, they are so beautiful. They're so stunning. And this small business cafe is actually one of the most gorgeous lots I think our art team have ever built. Um, even their downtown developer six uh, is a stunning high rise with a brand new aesthetic that I think is just going to resonate beautifully next year when we start to release that stuff. And we'll talk about it more on our social channels this week on the actual birthday, which maybe hopefully is today when this goes live, but the, uh, the blog notes and, um, yeah, we'll have all the details available on our platforms as per usual when we can talk about it in more detail. Amazing. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> That's super Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, no yeah. worries. <laughs> We're very excited to hear what pit players think, so uh, make sure that if you have any thoughts or feelings around the content, like comment below all, all the threads and everything, you know how it goes. <laughs> Sounds phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for letting us um, fire 10 questions at you to celebrate 10 years of The Sims Free Play. Hopefully we haven't been um, too too intense or thrown you off with any questions. <laughs> no, it's been really good. Thank I, you. We've really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having us on the podcast and we really appreciate your positive influence and everything you both do for The Sims communities. We especially appreciate how you both lift up other Simmers and support everyone that loves The Sims as much as we love making it. So, and yeah, we appreciate the love for free play and especially the anniversary more than ever. So thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you. Oh, Happy anniversary. Yes. yes. We should we should have brought some party poppers. Ah. <laughs> Edit in afterwards. Boom. Dan, add it in post. Yeah. Add it in post. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Woohoo. <laughs> Fireworks. Yay. Excellent. Oh my gosh. What a what a treat. This is a great way to start the week. Absolutely. Yes. This is phenomenal. Well, thank you so much to both of you for coming along um, for this episode. It's been so lovely to have you. Um, and as always, for all of you listening, thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to subscribe on your favourite podcast app um, and leave us a review as well. We're always happy A good one. <laughs> a <Thanks>. good only. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And we'll see you in the next episode.